Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today to show you a huge brow mistake I made earlier in the week. And quite honestly, I am surprised that now I'm coming to you with newly done brows that actually look okay. All of the skin has grown back around my eyes. And if you're here because you've just had a brow disaster, I want to tell you one thing. Calm down and put moisture on it. Just calm down. I was scared to death when this happened to me Tuesday. It's Sunday, so it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days, and now I look totally back to normal, and chances are great that you will too. And in just a few moments, I'll be showing you a video of the terror of the whole experience. But before I do that, if you are 40, 50, 60 plus like me, 70, 80, 90, or more, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel because aging in the society is not that easy, but we can do it in a wonderful way together. Okay, let me get into this. So basically this video is about treating a facial wax burn. That could be from eyebrow waxing or from mustache waxing. Although I have shaved my face for 35 plus years, I don't wax that area, so no danger of that there. And I'll link a video that shows you my results of face shaving for 35 years. So anyway, getting back to what happened, I decided that I wanted to go to a different brow lady. My brow lady, I love her to death, and I won't mention any names, but she doesn't even wear makeup. And so I thought she, she probably doesn't get the new brows that are supposed to be kind of arched, and maybe I should try a different brow lady. So I went looking online here in Wichita, Kansas for a good brow lady, and I found a wonderful looking brow studio. And I won't mention the name because I did happen to have kind of a negative experience there. However, the owner ended up treating me and she is absolutely wonderful. I can't recommend her highly enough. And in a future video, you will meet her, but I'm not going to mention the name of that salon now. But anyway, the brow owner had fabulous reviews and picture after picture of lovely brows. She does microblading, the whole bit, absolutely wonderful. And I called to get an appointment with that brow salon and unfortunately, that person, the owner of the salon, was totally booked up except for, you know, existing clients. She would take existing clients. But the lady on the phone said, don't worry, we have this other girl who has been with the owner all the time she's been here, 20 years, and so she will do a great job on you. So I thought, okay, I'll go to this new brow lady. Sounds good to me. So the day of the brow procedure, I called, and it was scheduled for 530 and I said, you know, I've gotten off work a little early. If we could make it 4.30, that would be great. And they said, well, you can't see the brow person we scheduled you with. And I said, why? And they said, well, she quit. But she said, I've got a great new brow lady and you know, she will be glad to take care of you and she can see you pretty quick here. So why don't you come in at 4.30? So I didn't ask how long that person had done brows. I just went in there, didn't take any photos of brows I liked, didn't take anything. I just went in, I said, hi, I'm new for you, but if you could wax my brows and if you could tint them blonde, that would be great because I do it myself at home with this boxed hair color and I don't necessarily think I do the best job. So to make a long story short, she dyed my brows first and supposedly they were supposed to be blonder and then she used the wax, the hot wax, to go ahead and sculpt the brows and I told her I wanted a little more arch here. And this is actually the handiwork of the salon's owner because after I went through it with this girl, um, she was very nice by the way, very sweet thing and I found out at the end of my procedure that she had worked there for a month. I don't know, she seemed very, very young, and so maybe that was her first month of practice. I don't know that for sure, but that is definitely a question that I should have asked before I went into the visit. And after I show you this experience, I will show you my takeaways from it. And the first one, of course, is to look up reviews on that brow person, and secondly, to find out how long they have been in practice. But anyway, that is getting ahead of myself. So before I give you any more details, I'll show you the entire experience from Tuesday afternoon, this past Tuesday, five days ago, when I was in the car just before getting my brows done. Okay, I'm going in to get my brows done by a new lady. And as you can tell, well, I have brow gel on, but I have gray brows. I don't have much of a tail. I have a little bit of a tail over here. Mostly it's drawn on. This tail's a little better. I would love to get somehow a little more arch in my brows, but I don't know if that's possible <laughs> with my brows. I don't have the best brows, but anyway, so there they are before, and I've not used my Tretinoin, my Retin-A, uh, for about a week, actually. 
So that's what they advise because you don't want to rip your skin off because they do use hot wax to pull off the hairs above and below. So here we go and I'll show you what they look like when I get out. Okay, this is not what I expected. I had my brows done and I learned a lesson. I'm really kind of terrified. Uh, I quit Retin-A a week ago, but as you can tell, when she used the wax, it really hurt my skin. And I was supposed to have my brows tinted blonde and they came out black. And normally I wouldn't show you this because I don't like to show you things that don't work out. But I also think that maybe I should tell you the truth behind some of these beauty procedures. So this is where I am right now. And fortunately, the owner of the salon, she came out and she gave me some salve to put on it. She said, just put on the salve for three days. And this Friday morning at nine, she said, come in and I will easily dye your brows up blonde again. And she said that will be easy to do, but that you need to let your skin heal. So anyway, that's where I am right now. It's kind of scary, I have to admit. Okay, this is the morning after the brow fiasco. And as you can tell, the brows are still like black, but I am healing more in terms of the Retin-A kind of abrasions. And I realized, let me get the mascara out from under my eyes. It's the least of my worries actually. But the lady who saw me at the very end last night trying to kind of fix me, she said, how long did you wait after applying Retin-A? And I said, a week. And she said, oh, well, then you should wait two weeks. And uh, there is no way I will wait two weeks to get my brows done after Retin-A. I won't stop for two weeks because then I'd have to start over back at the beginning. And for those of you who've gone through Tretinoin or Retin-A, it is hell to build yourself up again. Even stopping for a week was difficult for me because I knew it'd be a problem. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. I have another solution, which I'll show you soon, which is something I ordered from skinstore.com actually. I love them because I was able to use my 25% off discount code and uh, get this under brow hair trimmer. And I'll show you that in a little while. But anyway, I've decided I am not going to quit my Retin-A for even a day. I'm just not going to have wax done again on my brows. Either the person will use tweezers or they will use this little tool that I'm buying, which is a, a under brow hair trimmer, which I think would be good. But anyway, it is three o'clock in the morning because I woke up early. I tend to do that anyway, and I think I was upset about this. But anyway, there I am up close and personal. As you can see, I've still got some issues here with Retin-A, not fun. But I'll go ahead and reapply the moisturizing solution, which this is a zinc solution, according to the salon owner. Comes in these little, little packets. Those little packets. I'll go ahead and apply it here. She said to keep it really, really moisturized the whole time. So I put that all over there. And that is actually my glasses divot. I divot my face dents. What can I say? I put some on the other side. It's hard to, to hold the cell phone and do this. Aha, a bunch. Got a bunch here, as you can tell. Just kind of put that all over there, including in the middle. I'll drag it down over. Oh, I've got a lot. Drag it over here. Well, my eyes are looking better, and I'm hoping that these two will heal. And the face does tend to heal. So we will see, but uh, it'll be interesting going to work today because I've got to leave this stuff on, and I've got to leave those horrible brows on. And I actually have a business lunch today, as luck would have it. Laura and I own a business together. Uh, part of what we do is a national chiropractic network, and we are taking our chiropractic medical director and her husband out to lunch for a holiday lunch. So this will be fun. They'll, they'll get a kick out of it, especially Hank. <laughs> it's Joyce and Hank are their names. And Hank will laugh <laughs> that I did this to myself. Today is Wednesday, and then I'll go through Thursday and Friday like this, and Friday morning at 9, I'm going back to the salon owner and she says she can get rid of the black. We'll see. I sure hope so. But I do have a business lunch on Friday at uh, 1130. And, and that business lunch is with a director of a medical network that we work with. And he has never seen me botch myself like this, nor will he think it's very funny. So I'm hoping that Friday at 1130 when I go to that lunch, I'll look a lot better than I do now. It is Groucho Beth Galore. And right now I'm really regretting that I didn't ask that important question to my brow lady. How long have you done brows? Should have asked, didn't until the end. 
Found out it was a month again, which is kind of painful. Oh well, everyone makes mistakes. Okay, <laughs> this is me at about seven o'clock in the morning and uh, I have a business lunch today, as I mentioned earlier. So what I did was I just put a little foundation down here and a little up there, left the eyes totally alone, put more of the Vaseline type stuff on the eyes. Ugh, it's frustrating. Uh, I have no eye makeup on because I would have to remove it tonight and obviously my skin is kind of raw up there, so I'm not going to do that. I put a little of my new favorite lip stuff on and this is a Kylie product, amazingly enough, and I just threw it on there so it's not even on there very well actually when it's all on there with lip gloss and lip liner it looks beautiful but <laughs> today's not the day to be showing off makeup to its best advantage but look at those brows man those brows are pretty terrifying and i decided to go with the fluffy uh furry look that i've got going up there fluffy black so i've got this fluffy black vest on to look uh fluffy all over so wish me luck today at work and at my business lunch no i had it done tuesday at four and then I went through Wednesday yesterday, which wasn't fun. And now I'm going through Thursday. And I did the business lunch yesterday, you know, with this mess going on, but I didn't have a problem. But I have no business lunch today. However, I do have my office Christmas party tonight at 5.15. I am really happy though, because it is looking like everything is going away. This one still looks pretty dark and so does that one but for the most part, everything else is looking pretty good. So I think it's going to be fine. And tomorrow morning at nine, I go in to have the salon owner re-dye my eyebrows. I guess she's going to remove this color. And I normally use this, uh, this uh, Revlon hair color. I thought it was Clairol, but it's a Revlon hair color called Medium Ash Blonde. And so that's the color I normally use. And the first lady that I had this done with said that some people will bring their hair color in for someone to dye their brows. So I'm going to take that hair color in with me tomorrow to give her an idea of the color I want and she's sure welcome to use that. So anyway, the healing continues and I really think my skin is going to be fine. However, it is really scary having your skin ripped off. Okay, this is the morning of the third day. I had the procedure on Tuesday at four and now it is Friday morning at about five in the morning. I'm getting up to do my exercises. And this is also the morning where the salon's owner is going to bleach up my eyebrows, hopefully back to blonde. And I'm going to ask her about these areas. I still have some redness areas here, all through there and up here, a little bit there. I am hoping that everything goes back to normal. And of course, I'm hoping that there's no permanent results from this. Okay, I am sitting outside of the brow salon and it is about 20 minutes before my appointment. I guess I'm here a little early. And I'm excited to see the salon owner because I want to talk to her about um, the healing of my face. And also I need to get these black brows made blonde, which I'm excited about because I have a meeting on Zoom at 10.30 and then I have a business lunch at 11.30. And uh, it's one of our best clients and I hope that I look acceptable. And I'm not sure really that I can even put makeup on these um, areas yet. So I may just have to go as I am. So anyway, this is how it looks before and I will talk with you after. Okay, this is after my business lunch that I had and there is the finished result on my eyebrows. They don't look so black, which is really good. And she said, I'm not going to scar, which is a wonderful relief. And she said, as long as I keep that salve on the wounds, keep the wounds moist, <laughs> I don't like to say wounds, and keep sunblock on that and stay out of the sun, that I shouldn't have any discoloration either. She said, give it 10 days total, and that will look a lot better. So anyway, I think it's looking a lot better. It has not been fun to go through, but anyway, that's where I am right now. Well, that was what I've been wrestling with for the past week. And as I mentioned in the video, normally I like to go through all the ins and outs of a procedure and then tell you at the very end how it worked out. Normally I don't give you a play-by-play -play of all the agony as I'm going through it. But from here on out, I'm going to do that because I realized that in any of these procedures, even relatively simple ones, like having your brows waxed, there can be ups and downs and all arounds. And it is important that you know about what's going on in real time. So you could see the real terror on my face 
from the point at which I didn't know whether my skin would scar or not. So in the future, I'm going to give you an even more up close and personal look at any of these types of procedures. And I did mention that I decided to not do brow waxing anymore. I just think it is too dangerous, especially in my business here, because I do use tretinoin and it's very hard to stop and then start again. In fact, you know, I was off of it for seven days, actually more than that now. It's probably been 10, 11 days through all that brow healing process. So I need to start that again and it's probably back to the peelies for me. Also, another thing that I discovered during that whole thing was the salon owner was really confused about why, since I had quit tretinoin for seven days, why I had the abrasions, why my skin pulled off. And I figured it out. And here is what happened. Right after I scheduled the appointment, I scheduled the appointment like in two days, and then I realized, gosh, I'm using tretinoin, so I need to call them and put it seven days later so that I could quit my tretinoin for seven days. And I happened to be going to Las Vegas over the weekend. This was two weekends ago. The boys in my family love karting. And there's a national kart race in Las Vegas every year at about this time, and we always go. And I go with my son Dylan's wife, Melanie. We go shopping and do spying. That's what we do, spying, while the boys go deal with car races. And so they have fun and we have fun. And that's what we did this last time. But I went ahead and got what they called an anti-aging facial. And I did not realize this. And it was the salon's owner who asked me about the facial. I told her I'd had a facial. She said, was it an anti-aging one? And I said, well, yes, it was. How did you know? And she said, because your skin is acting like skin that has just been subjected to acids. Because anti-aging facials usually use glycolic acid to pull off the top few layers of your skin. She said, in addition to not using tretinoin seven days before, seven to 10 days before, you should use no acids on your skin. And I am regularly using acids and exfoliants on this channel. And I just realized I never want to take the chance of brow waxing again. So what I am doing is I got this little guy. This is the Michael Todd Beauty Sonic Trim Duo. And I really do love this. And I used my SkinStore.com discount, which was 25%. So I got a really good deal on it. And I think actually right now it is on sale at SkinStore. That's the thing I love about SkinStore. And this is not sponsored, by the way. I bought this myself. But I love it because they have very high-end skincare preparations and tools. And mostly these types of things don't go on sale, but they are often on sale at Skin Store. And I got this, and I'll take off both, both little ends to it here. And it has one thing, which is just for use in your mustache area, all over your face, that kind of thing. And actually, I already had something that was real similar to that. This is the flawless finish, and you can tell it has the same kind of end on it. But unlike this new one, this one, the flawless finish, did not have a small little area here. And so in the past, I had thought I would love to use that thing on my eyebrows, but with a big end like this, I was afraid that I would, you know, take off half my eyebrow. So I absolutely love this one. And here, here it is. You just turn it on. It has a little light there, and you can just look in your magnifying mirror. I'm not going to do it now for sure. I don't want to get rid of my brows. I've just been through hell to get them. But basically you can really, really clean up that brow area in a similar way as you get when you do the brow waxing. And so from now on, I'm going to use this at home and I'm even going to take this little tool with me when I go to get a brow treatment because I'm not going to let them put hot wax anywhere near me again. Well, that was a real learning experience for me, and so I thought it would make a great video because I do want to share what I learned with you. So the first tip I have, tip one, is to know your waxer. Basically, look up reviews online. It's almost impossible not to find reviews online of any provider. Look up that brow person's reviews and also ask how long they have been in business, how long they have been doing brows. That's very important. My second tip just deals with aesthetics, and that is to get some pictures of brows that you like, both the shape and the color, and take them in with you. I really did like what she did with my brows. However, I really prefer my brows a little bit thicker, but it never occurred to me to take in a picture of the brow shape and also the brow color. And my third tip is no tretinoin or any sort of facial acids or exfoliators for seven to 10 days. It's just very important that when you go in to have your service on your brows, that your skin be very intact. 
And when you've used acids or are using tretinoin on an ongoing basis, you are thinning that skin, making it more prone to be ripped off with that hot wax. So no tretinoin and no acids for seven to 10 days before a service. Now, if you go get waxed and you do have some burns anywhere on your face, it is very, very essential that you take excellent care of your skin at that point. First, get an antibiotic ointment, and I've linked the one that my brow person used on me below. You can get it from Amazon, but you can use Neosporin or something from the drugstore because after you've had a brow waxing accident, you don't necessarily have that 24 to 48 hours to wait to get something from Amazon. Just go to the drugstore and get Neosporin or some other antibacterial ointment. And it doesn't need to be a lotion. It needs to be that ointment consistency so it really stays like a gel on your skin. And use that four or five times a day as much as it takes to keep that skin around the abrasions or the wounds totally moist. Don't ever let that skin dry out. Also, it's important to use sunblock but I would not use a chemical sunblock because you've got raw skin there, open wounds, and if you use a chemical sunblock, it may be too much for your skin and cause more irritation. I would use a non-chemical, a physical sunblock. I think I used a very cheap one from Nivea that was a plus 60 and it was a physical sunscreen. And another thing that is important, and it's something that I have done ever since I was, well, ever since I was in my 30s, not only have I used daily sunblock, very, very important, but I have also practiced aggressive sun avoidance. And that's something I don't hear talked about enough on YouTube. And that is not just wearing sunblock, but wearing hats, visors, sunglasses, gloves, SPF clothing, all of those types of things to protect your face and your body from the sun. And it is especially important if you've just had a brow waxing accident to not only use the sunscreen, but also always walk around with a visor and or sunglasses to protect the area from the sun even more. Okay, that was a look at my not so much fun brow waxing burn experience. I pray you never have that happen because it is very scary, but all's well that ends well. And if you're not yet a member of the 50 plus beauty family, I hope you'll subscribe. And when you click that little bell that just sends you email notifications of my future videos so you don't miss anything. Okay, at this point in the video, I usually give you a little thought for the day, but this time I'm going to use the moments I have left in the video to share information about my hair. Because for the three or four years I've been on YouTube, many of you have wanted me to change the straight hair and get some curls in it. And I've finally gotten some tools that are helping me to do that. However, please leave a comment in the comment section because I don't really feel like myself with curly hair. Somehow the straight is just easier for me and I feel more like myself with the straight. But please just let me know curly or straight, which you prefer down in the comment section. I'm really curious about that. But let me tell you in a nutshell the tools that I use to get this style. First, I blow dried my hair, and of course I use the Dyson blow dryer, which is very expensive. You don't need a Dyson, however, I do love it. And then I use this GHD flat iron. It's a two inch flat iron, and this is actually the flat iron that I've been using to get my straight styles too. I love this flat iron because it only has one temperature and it's like 365, which doesn't sound like it's hot enough to pull out the kinks in your hair, but it really does and it does not damage my hair and it really gives me a wonderfully flat, sleek looking style really quickly. Love this. And I did get my hair all flatted before I put the curlers in there. And then I also use this and oh my, it's so filled with hair. Sorry about that. This is called Myro Pure. It's not very expensive. It's on Amazon. And what I do is I flat iron my hair with the GHD. Love that. And then I use this to get out the last little bit of frizz. And I also like to put this little, this little angle thing in my hair, which I do have a hair video where I show you how I use this. I'll link it below. But anyway, then I kind of run this through my hair very quickly. These are the hot curlers that I use to get this style. And there are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of them, and I really love that. And they're each, I think they're an inch and a half wide, so they give you big loose waves. And it is just a normal hot curler set. It comes with the little standard clips and also some larger clips, which I don't use, but it's wonderful to have both. Absolutely love this. And I got that tip from another beauty channel, Tammy of Tammy's Ageless Beauty. She's got gorgeous blonde hair, long hair, 
a lot more hair than I have, and she uses that curler set, and it looked absolutely beautiful on her. It worked wonderfully. So basically, I just flat ironed my hair, and then I ran the little hot brush through it. Then I put these curlers in, and I left the curlers in for probably 25 or 30 minutes while I was getting my makeup on, took my hair down, and it was all crazy, and I just kind of brushed through it with my fingers, and then I actually brushed through it, did a little bit of teasing, and then what I have found, and I absolutely love this, and if you want helmet hair that stays put all day long, this is the best hairspray I have ever found. I don't think I'll ever change from it. This is the Kenra Volume Spray 25. It was an Allure Beauty winner, and I can see why it won, because it absolutely does a beautiful job of holding your hair in place. Like, if I wanted this a little bigger, all I have to do is tease it out and spray it, and this would do the trick. So I think if you want curly hair and you want to keep your volume through the day, this Kenra hairspray is fabulous. And actually, at this point in the video, I was going to share some information about the makeup items that I have on my face, but I've realized I've gotten long-winded, as I can tend to do, so if you'd like to see a makeup video, just put that down in the comment section. I would love to do one. I haven't done one in quite some time. And so anyway, thank you for going through this horrendous experience with me. I know it seems minor to those of you out there, but when you're going through it, you're not sure if your face is going to scar. It's pretty scary. And for those of you who are going through that right now, you know, pray, feel good, and know that if you keep your face moisturized and keep the sun off of your skin, you're probably going to be just fine. And I look forward to seeing all of you in my next video.